the next few videos, we're going to jump right in and start having a look at how dots works. But firstly, in this actual lecture, we're going to use the classic way of creating a scene so that we can then compare it as we keep adding functionality. Now I'm using for this course Unity 2019.3.0 F6, which is the latest and greatest full release of Unity 2019.3. Three. And unless stated otherwise, please make sure that you do use this exact same version that I'm using so that we're all on the same page as we move ahead with learning about the dots system. Okay, so let's create our scene. As you'll see in mine that I've opened up in 2019.3, I've added in a package which has a sheep prefab in it. So here's my little sheep it's attached to this lecture as a resource and you might have seen him before because we've used him a few times. Drag and drop the resource in. Now you're going to get a mesh for your sheep and also the prefab. The prefab is the one that doesn't have the little arrow on it down in the assets. You don't need the sheep in the scene so let's just delete that. Okay but I'm going to put a ground plane in here. Um, not for anything but aesthetic purposes so that it kind of looks like they're standing on something. So just go uh, 3D object and we will create a very quick plane. Now to that plane, which should be set at 000, we're going to scale it up by 100 in the X and 100 in the Z. Now it's a little bit stark being very white. So I'm just gonna make a green material. So right click in assets, create material and let's call that green and we'll select that then in the hierarchy we will set its color to green if you want to put a texture on there then go right ahead that's fine drag and drop that into your scene onto that ground plane so we're now going to create a spawner to spawn a whole bunch of sheep so in the hierarchy we will right click and we will add an empty object let's call that spawn manager and then we're going to create a script to go on that. So we're just going to right click in the assets, create C sharp script. We'll call it spawn. And let's just drag and drop that onto the spawn manager so that we remember to do that. So there it is there. So open that up in Visual Studio. Now we're not going to use an update. All we're going to do is actually have a for loop that creates these sheep. So we will need to pass the prefab through so that we can use that. So public game object sheep prefab. And I'm going to create a constant int for number of sheep. And let's set that to 2000. Okay, so this number is actually quite important because this is the thing that we will change and then you can see how it affects performance. With this classic version of Unity, the way that we're going about this, be very careful how you lift this number up. Okay, so don't start with 20,000 sheep because it will possibly crash Unity uh, and you'll have to reload everything up again. So just add this sort of up incrementally a little bit at a time to see how it affects your performance. Now inside of the start, we'll just have a simple for loop. So for int i equals zero, i is less than the number of sheep, i plus plus. And then inside of here, we're going to position the sheep randomly around that plane. So we'll create a vector three called pos and that's going to equal a new vector three. And the X and the Z values will be random. So random dot range between negative 50 and 50, zero for our height of our sheep, and then random dot range negative 50 and 50. Like that for our position. And then we're going to instantiate. So instantiate from our sheep prefab at position or pause and then we'll just use quaternion dot identity for the actual rotation of the sheep great okay so that's going to create 2000 sheep in random locations save that 
Let's switch back into Unity and click on our Spawn Manager. Now, once that updates, it's going to give us a sheep prefab as an exposed variable up here. Drag and drop your sheep, make sure it's the prefab version of the sheep, into that space. And then you can press play and you'll see that you get 2,000 sheep. And there they are there. Okay, their, their feet are through the ground. If you want to, you can just select the plane, move it down to about there, and then just take notice of the Y position. So it's like minus 0 0.23. Stop playing, and I'll just set that to minus 0 0.23. Now when I run again, the sheep are standing on the ground. Now the whole purpose of this exercise is to compare the performance that we get from this classical way of doing it and then the dots way of doing it. So let's run it again. Locate your stats button, which is in the game window over here. Now if you can't see it, you might need to make that a little bit bigger so that you can find where that is. Let's have a look at the frames per second that I'm getting. Now, in this case, I've got a 130-ish going up and down. Now, I do actually get more than that when I'm not recording the screen. So we have to take that into consideration on my machine as well. Okay, so, um, you know, fair enough, 100 is... 130 that's pretty good I mean it, it can get bigger and I was up to 400 before when I wasn't recording the screen but to put some more load on our system we'll get our sheep to start moving around let's create a C sharp script and we'll call this move open that up in your editor and then inside of the update so we're actually going to put a start in this one but inside of here we will just move the sheep forward so this dot transform dot translate and we'll move it along its z-axis which is its forward axis 0 0.1 f so each update each sheep is going to move save that now go back into unity and you want to get that script and put it onto the sheep prefab. So let's select the sheep prefab and you'll see the script down the bottom. Okay, so let's now press play and have a look at our stats. So you can see here that I'm now getting actually quite good frame rates even though they're moving, but the thing is the sheep are getting further away and going outside of the camera viewing volume. Um, and it's going to go up and down based on how many sheep are actually inside that as they move around. So that's, you know, that's pretty good. Let's just stop playing. And we want to now increase the number of sheep to see if we can get that frame rate down. So let's go with not with 20,000 as I had before, but I'm going to put 10,000 in here. Let's save that. Let's go back and press play see how we go okay so with 10,000 and they're all moving I'm getting like 50 56 frames per second okay we probably just lift that up a little bit more let's put 15 save it and go back and it's going to depend on your own individual machine that you're working on as to um, the effects that you'll get with the frame okay so we're now down a little bit further at about 36 635 I'm kind of aiming for about 30 frames per second uh, and you can see there's a fair few sheep they're all packed in quite tightly moving across the camera's viewing volume and eventually it's going to go up when they start to get beyond that but we just want them to appear like that so that we can compare these frame rates now, to make a better comparison, let's try and keep all of the sheep inside of the camera view. So what I'm going to do in the scene view is rearrange this so that we have the Z axis running up and down the screen so that the sheep will actually move up there. So we want to look down the Z axis from this side. So this is the Z axis going positively away from us but we want to tilt the camera down like 
this from Y. So I'm going to look straight down Y by clicking on there. And if you come out, you can see that you're actually looking straight down on that. Okay, so to figure out what the Z value is down here for the starting of the sheep, or at least when they go off the screen where they should pop back to, and what it will be here before they go out of view, we will need to put a sheep in the scene. So you can just grab your sheep prefab and it's going to be very tiny in this case. Might actually just want to move it up a bit. You still want to be able to see these sheep. And if we have a look over in our inspector, we can keep track of where that Z value is. And you can see it's like minus 243. So let's bring it in. We're only going to be changing this between what we say negative 50 and positive 50 so that's about there now if I zoom in you can now see the sheep down there and if I move the sheep across to this middle axis on here we can see that that's going to be the x value at pretty much at zero and over in the inspector it will tell you that as well okay so that's negative 50 and if we put the sheep up to positive so move it up in the other direction and watching over in the inspector till we get to 50 that's pretty much what we want there okay so what we're going to do then is we want to set our camera to look at this view so go over to your main camera select that and then go game object align with view and you can now see that I'm in HD mode. I'm just going to put this into free mode like that. Now the sheep here, you can see that's when it's going to be at the top of the screen. Let me add another sheep down the bottom and I'm going to put him at negative 50. Okay, so now you can see that's a positive 50 and that's going to be our negative 50. So I can actually grab hold of your main camera and just move it down the y-axis and you'll get closer and closer to them because you do want to see some kind of detail in these sheep as they fill up the screen and then I can also move the camera a little bit in the z just to align it nicely like that okay so with that done I'm just going to get rid of my extra sheep prefabs now to make these sheep pop back to the beginning, which is down here at minus 50, when they reach the top, we need to change the move script. So come into the move script and inside of the update after you've moved them, let's test if they have moved outside of that positive 50 at the top of the screen. So it's going to be if this.transform.position.z is greater than 50, we're going to put them at this.transform.position and we have to equal that to a new vector 3 uh, because we can't set z, x or y in here because Unity doesn't give us access to that. And here's a little bit of a quiz question for you to think about. What would you put in the rest of this line? So just pause the video now finish this line. When we come back, I will show you what I've put in there. Okay, how did you go with that? Well, uh, we want to put it back down the bottom of the screen. So we want to have negative 50 as the Z value. Now the Y value will be zero as it was before. What have you got for the X value? Well, you could have set it at zero, but then they're all going to appear in exactly the same spot. We want them randomly across the screen. So it's going to be random.range between negative 50 and 50, just like we did when we first positioned them on the screen. Okay, so did you get that? I hope you did. Right, so save that. Now we switch back quickly into Unity, press play and have a look at the sheep. When they reach the top of the screen, they're going to pop back down the bottom here. So we're not actually spawning any more sheep. We're just kind of reusing them and putting them at a new random X across here. And so you get this quite an interesting grid pattern thing 
going on with them but the most important thing now is that they're always all on the screen and they're all moving so when we have a look at the stats now we're looking at 20 22 frames per second to have all of those sheep in the scene and we'll be using this fps as a comparison value as we start moving through and optimizing our code with the job system now just before we end this video i'll quickly show you another way that you can just squeeze a little bit more performance out of unity when you have a lot of meshes that are the same so unity already attempts to optimize meshes that are similar by batching them and that but you can also turn on what's called gpu instancing if you select your prefab which is our sheep in this case and just find where you've attached your shader which is our texture that we're using down the bottom here you'll see at the bottom of the shader or the material I should say that you've got this advanced options to enable GPU instancing so if you just turn that on it's going to force unity to actually batch more copies of the sheep now in this case we have the sheep with the same material on it so you won't get a lot of extra performance out of it but you can get a little bit more and basically what it's doing is it's pushing more draws of the sheep through per update uh, which makes it i guess a little bit more efficient and faster so let's uh, press play and let's just compare the stats so here's our sheep let's go on the stats and have a look now if you have a look here at mine okay so this is what was I at before? It was about 22 or something. So we're now getting about five frames per second more out of those sheep. So you can imagine if you add more and more objects, if you're working with like lots of objects, which is essentially what you want to do with the ECS, even that little amount of extra frames that you get by doing that is going to help you a lot as you increase uh, the number of objects being drawn. Okay, so that is the classic system. Now we're going to move on and start having a look at including the job system.